Hi, I'm going to talk about the fourth lab, which is circuits. The purpose of this lab is to predict the behavior of circuits containing resistors in series and parallel, and use multimeters to measure the actual values of conventional current and potential differences in the circuits. Lastly, to examine the behavior of ohmic resistors and capacitor. So the fundamental physics of principles used here are conservation of charge, Kirchhoff circuit laws, Ohm's law, and capacitance. The diagram here is the observed model, the system is circuit, and the surrounding is everything else. And I have not set any initial conditions for this lab. The assumptions made here are resistance of wires is negligible, the resistance of a meter is negligible, and the EMF is a change in the potential difference of capacitance and the change in the potential difference of resistors. The first physics idea is conservation of charge. Conservation of charge, which is the net charge of an isolated system, will always remain constant. The second one is Kirchhoff circuit laws which quantify how current flows through a circuit and how voltage varies around a loop in the circuit. The next one is Ohm's law, which shows the relationship between voltage, current, and resistance in an electrical circuit. And the last one is capacitance, which is the ability of a component or circuit to collect and store energy in the form of an electrical charge. So the brief view, for a brief view, so for, for a brief preview of the result, the actual values of current and voltage given by the model matched those predicted by formulas, and in an earthy circuit, the magnitude of current is time dependent based on the exponential equations. So for part one, uh, my predictions of the current is um zero point zero two ampere, and the calculations is shown as well, and the actual reading was 0 0.02 ampere, and if the emitter was connected backwards, the reading would have been negative 0 0.02 ampere. When replacing one emitter with a voltmeter, the readings were 3 voltage and 0 ampere, and this is because potential difference across opening equals that across the power source, and open circuit means no current. After closing circuit, the following showed the potential difference for each section. So the change in the potential difference of round trip is the sum of all the potential difference for each section, which equals to zero, and this follows the loop rule. The current reading was 0 0.02 ampere as expected, and the emitter reading doesn't change because voltmeter has very high resistance, meaning there's no current flowing through. And this is the graph of potential versus position. When replacing the voltmeter with an emitter in parallel with the 100 ohm resistor, current reading increases to 0 0.02 ampere, and this is because less current comes into contact with the 100 ohm resistor. Also, emitter has no resistance, so the effective resistance of the portion of the circuit decreases, which increases the current. The following are the resistance for each component. The values are higher than expected. Um, due to low precision of emitter. For part 2, when connecting batteries to 10 ohm bulb and capacitor in series, bulb starts bright then decreases until going out, and the current decreases from maximum down to zero. Also, uh, when disconnecting the battery and reconnecting capacitor directly to the 10 ohm bulb, bulb lights up then decreases until going out. So the following are the time taken for the capacitor to charge and discharge when connected to 10 ohm and 20 ohm bulb. This is the graph of voltage versus time graph. The following shows the calculation finding the relationship between the voltage and time. When looking at the experimental RC, RC is the negative reciprocal of the slope, which is 6 seconds. The expected one was 6 seconds, which is the product of R and C. There is no model discrepancy since the model used is the ideal model. And the error, uh, and the error involved here is that measuring time for charging and discharging is likely to be not accurate due to human error in stopping the stopwatch. From now, I'm going to answer two other questions. First, what if you're doing this lab in real life and use an actual emitter instead of an ideal simulated emitter? What's different about a real emitter and how did it have affected the circuits you hooked it up to? So in real life, the emitter would have some resistance and because of this, readings for current would likely decrease as resistance increase. 
The second one, what if you're doing this lab in real life and used a real battery to charge a real capacitor with no resistor in the circuit? How quickly would our ideal model predict the um, capacitor to reach full charge? So if there's no resistance and no, if there's no resistor in the circuit, our ideal model would predict the capacitor to reach full charge immediately since there would no be there be no resistor to slow down the current. Um, thank you for listening to my presentation, and this was Esther.